a treat today. I am so excited about our next guest. Mandy Doman, who is the COO of Advanced Brain Technologies, is here today to talk about therapeutic music for autism spectrum disorders. Thank you so much for being here, Mandy. Kristen, it's an honor. Always so great to be part of anything that you do, especially helping these families. So I am delighted. Thank you. Well, I, you know, for those watching or listening, I've known Mandy for goodness, I don't even know how many years. That's it's well over a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she and her husband, they're just phenomenal people. And they have this amazing company called Advanced Brain Technologies that does this amazing therapeutic listening program, which, you know, my son has been doing for years. He's actually done this afternoon. He was doing his listening earlier. Um, it's been a big part of our life, but today we're going to learn about it. So if you don't know about it, this is an interview you definitely don't want to miss. And if you do know about it, Mandy's going to probably tell you some stuff that you might not have heard yet. So I'm just, gosh, I just love this program, Mandy. I just, it literally is a lifestyle for us. And it's one of those things that like, I'm, th I'm thinking like Jackson's 19 and I feel like we've been doing this with him since he's been three or four and his whole life, basically, like he has no memory of not doing it, which is, isn't that so cool? It's amazing. And, you know, I've been doing it for 21 years off and on. I do it with my own children as well. So Brendan, he's 11. He does a listening program. So, yeah, I mean, it does. It becomes part of your life. And it's amazing how, like, I know my son, he requests it. Like, it's something that's just part of, you know, his day. And it, it just helps balance him. And so we're going to talk about, you know, and I love the first question that we're going to talk about today is, how does a listening program help with sound sensitivities? Because I remember when we were first, my, my family was first learning about this program. I remember being so nervous. I was like, oh, my kid's never going to wear the headphones and like, this is never going to happen. So anyone listening or watching, just fast forward, what, almost 16 years. And yeah, we do it. We do this program nearly every day. Like I can't think of other than, I'm sorry, we do it five days on and two days off. But um, we're always listening to some type of classical music every day. So, um, you know, for those, though, that are listening and watching, though, I know so many of our kiddos of all ages, I don't care if you're two, 52, if you're on the spectrum, so many of um, these individuals have sound sensitivities. So, you know, how does a listening program help with that? Well, there's so many ways. So obviously the listening program, you know, it's so much more than just listening to music. We have so many different neuroacoustic modifications, which basically are different ways that we're treating or changing the music so that we can really highlight the different attributes of the program and providing that stimulation to the brain. So when it comes to sound sensitivities, we created a program. There are actually four within the listening program, but the program that's used primarily to help with sound sensitivities is called TLP Spectrum. So what we found over the last two decades of working, especially with kids on the autism spectrum with sound sensitivities, is that the low frequencies really help to calm the nervous system. It helps to actually reprogram the limbic system to help create a healthy relationship with our environment, especially with sound. So you can think of sound sensitivities. There's actually a, a few different labels. Some people can actually be very sensitive to sounds where it, you know they don't bother other people. Some may actually hear sounds that other people aren't even aware of or sounds that are coming from a long distance away. So it's interesting to hear families describe their child's sensitivity. But yeah, so spectrum is the one that we use to calm the nervous system. And it is remarkable. And, and, and do you guys still recommend the five days on, two days off? Yeah, so the five days, you know, it's really important for the brain to have the right frequency, intensity, and duration. That's how we convince the brain that we're trying to make lasting change. So with that frequency, we're finding that that's doable for our families. And it provides a meaningful difference so that those changes last. Absolutely. And of course, if we can use the um, waves bone conduction audio system with the spectrum program, that's where we really see the greatest amount of change. 
So I can explain the bone conduction. Yes. I, I love the bone conduction. I remember when I first learned, I think I told everybody, anyone who would listen, I'm like, let me tell you about bone conduction. So yes, please explain to everybody <laughs> what that means. Perfect. So I think it was back in 2007, we were introduced with the idea of, in, of incorporating a multi-sensory approach to doing the listening program. So what, what that means is that if you just imagine a nice high quality headphone, you're going to hear a sound through the ears. That is referred to as air conduction. So air conduction is really how we hear other people. It's how we experience our environment auditorily. But we also experience sound through our bones. So we incorporated a bone conduction transducer. It literally is just connected to the top of the headband. So it'll sit right on top of your child's head. And that sound delivers through, it's delivered through your bones. So it's a very gentle vibratory sensation. It's very comforting. The way I like to describe it is that if you just touch the front of your throat while you're speaking, you'll actually kind of feel what that sensation is like. That's bone conduction. So, you know, we hear our own voices primarily through bone conduction, which is why if you're listening to a recording of your own voice, it sounds a little different than what you're used to. Um, but that bone conduction provides a lot of calming influence. So it helps to get us out of that state of fight or flight, and it helps to improve communication skills as we look at that auditory vocal loop that happens when we're training the auditory system we're also training speech and language skills. So it's doing a lot. It's really phenomenal and very pleasant to listen to. Well, I, I love that. And you talked about language. So let's talk about, you know, how does it help language? Yeah, so music and sound, you know, really they're processed in very similar ways within the brain. So sound has structure, timing, rhythm, context. So there's meaning behind music, just like there's meaning behind language. So when we're listening to very structured therapeutic music, especially with bone conduction, we're really able to imprint or retrain the auditory system to perceive a full range of frequencies. You know, the brain can process down from 20 to 20,000 Hertz. The voice is represented in the middle range. So we actually spend a lot of time um, basically working on these different sets of frequencies over time. So we're going to progressively move through them. But by the time we reach, oh, about six to eight weeks in, that's when we move into the middle range of frequencies. And those are related to our speech and language skills. So we start to hear from parents they're using more words. They're attempting language instead of just pointing. They're starting to understand the nuances of language. So there's a lot of really exciting things that happen as we're training that part of the brain with music. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back, at, you know, when my son was just first starting this and his language was so limited. It was, you know, we had maybe one or two words. And now the fact that he can actually request his music and he actually goes through and asks for like when it's uh, not the, the therapeutic, when it's just, you know, um, the health music, um, it's a uh, and all that means is just nice classical music. Um, he will go pick his albums for himself. Like he knows which ones he likes. And it's, I don't know, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. It's a beautiful thing to hear him request, you know, different albums. It's a beautiful thing to have him go get his music. Um, and so I, I just, I, I love it. Um, I love to learn more though about the social skills, because I also know that you guys have found that this helps social, social skills as well. Oh my goodness. If I can just share a little personal story on um, my son, Ethan, who is now 21. When he was little, he was kicked out of every daycare. Um, he wouldn't eat with a family at dinner time. He couldn't go to birthday parties. So his social skills were so limited. He was diagnosed with like oppositional defiance disorder and anxiety. And we ended up homeschooling him. And at that point, you know, he was spending more time in the principal's office than he was in his class. He was being bullied. He was bullied. It was a pretty dreadful experience. And, you know, we as parents were just thinking, gosh, what can we do? So we decided to homeschool him and we did 
the listening program with him, among a lot of other things, and just really got him into a place where he felt happy and secure and started doing the listening program. And I remember one day, um, one of the things that happens in the program is we actually move the music around you in a 360 degree field. So basically, you hear maybe a violin over in your right ear, it's going to move over to your left ear. And one day he said, mom, the headphones are broken. And so I went running up, I'm like, they look okay, what's going on? He said, well, the sound, it started moving. It's, it's over in this ear and then it's over in this ear and it's never done that before. And I realized for him, it had been maybe six months that he had started listening consistently. And that movement had been in the program the entire time. But then what happened, like two weeks after that, he started making all of these exciting changes. Like we were working on bike riding forever. All of a sudden he started riding his bike. Things that used to bother him like lightning or bees, he just kind of, they would roll off his shoulders. He would notice them, but it wasn't the freak out, you know, situation. And then he started getting more interested in friends. We put him in scouts and he just excelled. He was part of the leadership program. We put him in Boy Scouts and he, you know, went through that program. Eventually we put him back into school in seventh grade. So by this time we were a good two years into the program and I felt like he was more than ready. So within a short amount of time, we just had remarkable feedback from all of his teachers. He was making friends. He was going places. He had never done that before. And then by the time he reached high school, he was getting the lead in all of the school musicals. He was selected to be the captain of like five different groups. They had to reassign them. Um, and there was this other, you know, kind of contest, I guess, if you will, that he also won. So it was just, it was pretty remarkable. But the most exciting part of that for me was that he, I, he let me read his school yearbook. And there were some messages from a few of the girls that he had gone to elementary school with and in two different spots. And basically what they said is that, you know, Ethan, we're so glad that we know you now. We were afraid of you when you were in elementary school. And now we just love you. You're such a light. Um, so I think, you know, really my son for me is my greatest example of just hope and knowing that you're your own, your, your child's very best advocate and to never give up on them. You know, it's remarkable how resilient we are. And that's just kind of one of my favorite stories about social skills. He truly is just training. And it's amazing because I remember your sons when they were very young. And, you know, and it's funny because I must have known that was happening, but because it's it's so long ago that like all I remember your son from all your posts and everything else is, you know, he, I feel like he was like the prince in like one of the theater shows <laughs> and like, you know, getting the lead here and there. And he had like the most beautiful smile with your dimples and just like, just the most handsome young man. I can, like, I can, I visualize what he looks like. And I know you guys listening or watching don't know, but he's like this, like, he literally looks like Prince Eric from Little Mermaid, like for real, like looks like that's what he looks like. And, um, it's, it's crazy that, that he, you know, had those challenges and look where he is today. So, uh, you know, kudos to you definitely. Um, because I think it always takes a strong mama to, or dad to, um, never give up on their kiddos. So I love that story. So thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. And I know um, we also want to talk about learning. I think that, you know, especially for those on the spectrum, you know, who are always trying to figure out, you know, how do we catch them up or how do we even teach them to start with, right? Um, learning often is, I feel like it takes a second, like a, kind of like the second seat or the back seat or whatever the saying is. <laughs> um, I feel like it's, um, it's one of those things where, you're so focused on looking at behaviors or you're so focused on looking at independent, you know, skills, like, can they, you know, get dressed or can they, can they be potty trained or can they eat with a spoon or a fork or can they not have a meltdown? I mean, this was at least my life, right. Um, that I feel like often learning is like, you're so exhausted by the end of the day that you're like, okay, I, I know they need to learn math. I know they need to learn reading, but like, how am I supposed to do all of that when I'm they're not even available for this other stuff. And I know that this program helps open up those worlds, like that world and it opens doors that um, might not have been, you know, easily opened before. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, and I spent 21 years talking to so many of these families and that's exactly the way they're describing it. So I do, I understand. And what we see after someone's going through the listening program is just a new level in everything. Um, you know, the listening program follows a developmental approach. It's based on decades of my husband Alex's family's work of really understanding neurological organization and how to provide input in order to improve the way the brain and body are functioning and processing information relating to others. So one of the things that I find is the most exciting, especially for someone on the autism spectrum, is that if we can work first of all to calm down their sensory system, help them to feel a sense of safety and comfort and help them to kind of get out of their body so that they can look up. There's so much going on in the world that they might be missing because of all of these other things that you've just described. So if we can help to expand the way that their brain is processing at a really foundational level, improve the way their body is you know, processing as well. One of the things that we see is that because we're moving through different sound frequencies, which I'll explain really quick, because I think it's really important to have that kind of foundational knowledge. So the best way I have found to explain this is that what we're doing with the listening program is that we're providing a systematic progression of sound frequency training across the human curve or hearing curve. So if you like to imagine maybe a keys of a piano, you have very low frequency sounds over to the left, you have middle frequencies in just the middle range, and then the higher frequencies are over to the right. So imagine if you will, that we've just captured only the low for a period of time. And as your child is listening to just the low frequencies, that's intending to be very calming, helping to get them into a place of just feeling comfortable and happy. Then we move them to the next part of the program, which are the middle range of frequencies. These are the areas where we start to see the most exciting changes related to learning. So we're improving the ability to process information. So if they're being you know, taught something, if it's, especially if it's auditorily, the teacher is talking to them, they need to be able to take in, process and store, and then be able to utilize the information they're hearing. But can you imagine if they're trying to hear and what they're actually hearing at the same time, the same volume perhaps even, is there's maybe a car driving outside or someone's walking in the hallway or their neighbor is tapping or making other sounds. It's really hard for them to be able to just focus on what their teacher is saying. They're taking it all in. So one of the things that we really work to do is train the brain to filter out distracting sounds so that they can focus on what's meaningful. And if we can start to do that, just imagine their attention, their focus, their ability to really comprehend and learn. That's one of the most exciting aspects of this program in that middle range. So as we're then moving up to the higher range of frequencies, which are on the very far right, those frequencies are very stimulating. They're, um, I don't know, they're just energizing. They make you feel motivated. We see more independence happen when somebody's in that red zone. There's like a new sense of self-belief and motivation to try new things. We hear about kids trying new food for the first time, or you know, maybe they're actually getting themselves ready for school or anticipating what's coming up, or even managing those transitions in a much more meaningful way. So everything just starts to get easier, especially learning. I love that. And, um, you know, I remember you guys used to call it like warm up, workout and uh, cool down phase. And that's every time I'm on a treadmill, I always think of that because, I'm, you know, on a treadmill, you have your warm up and then you work out and then you cool down. You don't just jump off the treadmill you know, full, you know, unless you're doing orange theory, but <laughs> typically you have a cool down phase. And so I, I, I can totally see it with my son when he's listening. I, I always know exactly where he's at, like in the program, I can just see it in his body. Um, and it's, it's always fascinating to me. It's always amazing. Like I'm like, after all these years, I can still totally know where he's at and, and how he's, you know, I'm looking at, and I can tell how he's feeling. So I love that. 
Now let's talk about, you know, can you customize or personalize this program? Yes, there are so many ways that we can personalize our program. I actually was just talking to a mom today. She has a three-year-old little guy on the autism spectrum, and she said, there's no way he'll wear headphones. I, I guess I'm just going to have to keep waiting before I can try this program with him. And so we do have a speaker-based protocol, which she was so delighted about. We got on the phone. She has an old boom box in her house. We have these CDs that are available that basically help to prime the system without headphones. So they are part of the listening program. They do have the neuroacoustic modifications, but they're mastered to sound good and to help the system uh, play through, through speakers, sorry. So, you know, most of the programs are going to be needing headphones. That is the intention that allows us to really provide the most direct contact to train those special aspects of the system. Um, so the first thing is you can use headphones, you can use a speaker. So that's part of the preparation for it. But if you think of the listening program as the method, we have four different protocols that we've created to target different areas of need. Some people need a very gentle program, like our little ones, or you know, people who have a lot of sensitivities, or they're recovering from you know a brain injury or some other sort of health need. Um, also, if there are physical needs, we need a very gentle program that's going to target those foundational skills so that we can have something solid to build from. Whereas other people are going to want a very advanced program if they're looking for, you know, change and development at a higher level, we're not so much working on a remedial sort of need, but rather we're really looking at refining and taking you to that next level in your performance. So we have programs that really are geared for all ages and every level of need. So as far as individualizing them, the first thing that we like to do is really get a good understanding of your goals, what the concerns are, and you know, kind of what your life looks like. Because 15 minutes may be perfect for somebody, 30 minutes might be a great option for somebody else. So we're customizing the programs you're listening to, how much time per day. There's even like the actual, like once you put the headphones on, what are you going to be doing? Some people need to just sit and you know, let the music come to them without doing anything else. Other people need to be busy. So letting them do, you know, a quiet, relaxing or creative activity is perfect. Um, but really, so when we're looking at the programs, we have the four. So there's TLP spectrum. This is the most gentle and is going to be targeting sensory sensitivities, emotional well-being, as well as physical needs. Then we have TLP Achieve. This one's quite gentle as well. I like this program for you know elementary school age kids a lot. This one targets deep and language skills as well as attention, learning, and memory. And then we have level one, which is going to be our most advanced listening therapy. So even though it's called level one, it's actually the highest intensity program. So those first three are going to be using beautiful classical music. And then the fourth program is very different. It is it, using world style music. And we basically have instruments from all over this planet that are combined to create a very special rhythmic music listening therapy. And that one also has some fun activities involving the body and the voice and even some therapeutic drumming. So yeah, we can definitely customize, look at you know which headphones you need, time of day. So there's a lot that goes into really making sure that the program is set up to be the most successful that it can be for each person who's using it. And can you combine it? So if you wanted to do TLP or is it, is there levels? Like do you do TLP then achieve then level one and then the drums or do you, can you combine however that works? Meaning that it's customizable, I guess. Yeah. So each program you would want to plan on at least five to 10 months to get through the initial one or two cycles, and then you can move on to the next level. So one of my favorite protocols for um, children on the autism spectrum, if we're focusing primarily on like sensory needs, you know, those foundational kind of developmental areas, I really like to start with TLP spectrum, preferably with waves, and then move to in time. So, you know, probably 10 months on spectrum, and then move on to in time, which is very different. I like the 
versatility of having, you know, enough time listening to our classical music and then having something completely different to really expand your thinking. It creates, um, you know, a lot of just rhythm in your life and also helps you to get in sync with whatever is going on around you. So those two programs are kind of my go-to for a lot of our families. It works really well. Awesome. I, I learned something each time. I love that. So, and then, um, as we're wrapping up, because I know, you know, families, uh, um, you know, they want to know how long before they see results. And that's always the number one question we're going to get like, okay, if I do this and I invest, how long does it take? This is actually one of my favorite questions to answer. So what I will say is that there are short-term benefits that happen all across the program. <laughs> and then we have long lasting, like forever changes that occur as well. So immediately we've had a number of fit parents and this is, I've seen so many videos of kids literally going from being agitated, crying. And then the moment their parents put the headphones on them, they just kind of stop and they listen and their bodies just relax. That one dad described it as though his son were just melting into his lap when he put the headphones on. So to me, that's like an immediate short-term benefit. But then he said, like, as the day went on, he was noticeably calmer. He was more focused. So again, that could be maybe a, a short-term immediate benefit that we would see right as we're starting the program. Um, but then as we're moving through, we see a, a dramatic decrease in sensory sensitivities. And for most of our listeners, that could be a, considered a lasting change that just even gets better and better over time. So that it's no longer an obstacle in their life. So as we're moving and everything is color coded, which makes it really helpful for parents who are working with their professional to know like if you're in the blue zone that means you're listening to full spectrum music and we have very specific outcomes or benefits that relate to the blue zone then we move you to the green zone which is all calming and low frequencies then the orange zone there's going to be even more short-term and long-term benefits so short-term better attention better focus better listening skills long-term improved auditory processing helping you with your speech and language skills. And again, these get better and better. And then finally, when we get to the red zone, those are the high frequencies. And this is energy, short-term benefit, as well as you know more independence, better thinking skills, better creativity and problem solving. So those are the kind of benefits that we see progressively over time as we're moving into each new training zone. So it just gets better and better in my opinion. I love it. Now, how do families find you? So you'll go to advancedbrain.com and we do have a lot of information available there. You can listen to samples. We have a seven day free trial, which I love to see, you know, is it something that you can do for 15 minutes a day? So definitely check that out as well. And then they can call you guys. You guys can give them a consult to get them started and how that all works. So it's, it's pretty simple, right? Yeah, that's really the best way. Call us, you know, let us hear about your child, help us to understand what your needs and goals are, and then we can help you really understand what the program is designed to do, how it can help your child, what the benefits and the options are. So absolutely call us. We're delighted to hear from you and absolutely will help. And, you know, for families that are sitting there and they're listening or they're watching, um, you know, and we, you know, I've been there, I know you've been there in a different way with your son, you know, as moms, we just, and dads or grandparents, whoever is watching, right. You love that individual, regardless of their age, you know, sometimes you do feel helpless. Sometimes you feel like, gosh, you know, I've tried everything. I've spent so much money. I've done this. I've done that. And it gets to the point where you're like, is anything going to really help? Okay, great. This lady looks nice, right? She looks sweet. But like, how do I know it's going to help my kid? And maybe she doesn't understand my situation, you know, and I know because I've been there. I've watched lots of videos. I've, you know, been on Google, gone down that, you know, rabbit hole. And, um, you know, sometimes things work great and sometimes they don't. But, you know, with this program, this is near and dear to my heart. I would never say I've done something for, I don't think I've actually done anything for 16 years, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I can't try to think, like, have I ever committed to anything for that many years? Um 
And it really doesn't feel like a commitment to me. It really is, like I said, it's just part of our life. It's just an extension. You go in the car and you turn on the music, right? Um, to us, having the listening program in our life just is just like an everyday thing, right? But for those families that, you know, and I know, I know what those families are feeling, and I know they're out there listening, I know they're out there watching. What message do you want to leave with them today, Mandy? You know, one of the things that I've always found, especially if things are hard and stressful and you really don't know one day to the next what is going to happen and looking long term, there's so many options and things to do and responsibility. So what I've always found is if I can just take it 15 minutes at a time, that's the intention. What do you want to accomplish in that next 15 minutes? How do you want to see yourself? How do you want to see your child? And just really trying to bring out the best in yourself and just know, even if it's 15 minutes at a time, it really can change the outlook for the rest of your day. You'll be very surprised, but stay with it. You deserve happiness. I know that your children are so beautiful and they're in such good hands with you. So just stay with it and 15 minutes at a time. That's such, that's such a beautiful, you know, way to think about it. And uh, you're just such a beautiful person. I wish I could give you a real hug. So I'll give you a virtual <laughs> hug. And um, just thank you for you and Alex for everything you guys are doing. And you, you've you helped thousands and thousands and thousands of families all around the world. So if you're listening to this and you're not in the United States and you're in another country, they help literally, I don't know any country you don't help. I mean, you help everywhere, everyone around the world. So don't hesitate, you know, either you get on the website, which is advancedbrain.com. You could probably message them that way. You can call them. Uh, they are there to help. So thank you so much, Mandy, for being here today. Thank you so much. We are just so delighted about everything you're doing with the Autism Hope Alliance. And we just appreciate you so much. So thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. And to everyone else, thank you guys for watching. And until next time. Bye, guys.